So step number one is buy a vibrator. And that's the whole video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. No, unfortunately, there's a little bit more to this video, although honestly, buying a vibrator is not a bad step. <laughs> For the majority of my life, I have been single, and I took it upon myself every Valentine's Day to feel extra bad about myself, and to also let everybody else know publicly how bad I felt about being single. I was like, ooh, baby, this is humor. This is comedy. Today, I wanted to sit down and do something a little bit different and hopefully a little bit more useful and kind of dissect like all the pressures that women feel to be in a relationship and that I have felt for so long. And and also talk about like my personal journey from somebody who derived a lot of self-worth from male attention and from being in a relationship to now genuinely being happy being single. Well, maybe not like happy, I definitely need to see a therapist, but like, um, what I mean is that I have come to enjoy being single. It's definitely the first time in my life where like I would honestly rather be single than in a relationship with the vast majority of people. And I'm not like happy all the time, obviously, but I don't blame my unhappiness or any unfulfillment in my life on not being in a relationship, if that makes sense. Also, sorry for the whack color correction and YouTuber apology video background for this video. I filmed this on like three hours of sleep. I had been sleeping on the floor for like two weeks. I haven't gotten my whole setup going in New York yet. I am living in chaos, but um, I'm trying to do my job and um, I, I like this video. I think I have a lot of useful things to say, so um, enjoy. Before I really jump into this video though, I did want to say there's definitely a double standard between men and women with how we talk about relationships and being single. There is both a lot more pressure on women to be in relationships and to get into a long-term relationship earlier in their life and this kind of surface level feminist pressure to be independent and strong. And in order to do that, you have to be single. Whereas I feel like guys can be in relationships their whole life and they are never criticized for being emotionally dependent on women or not being a strong independent man. I didn't want to make this video in like a pseudo feminist way that's like, you have to be single in order to be a strong independent woman type of way. I wanted to make it in like a, here is me trying to like self-actualize, like be comfortable with myself and not feel so much pressure to be in a relationship type of way. I think at the end of the day, our society really does put so much pressure to be in a relationship as kind of your default state. And I just want people to feel comfortable being single because I think it's such an important like skill to have and such an important time of development in your life. So first I wanted to talk about kind of my history and how my mentality has shifted over the years. First, when I was in high school, I was very much a quote unquote career woman. And all I wanted to do was focus on my studies. No boys, no distractions, no shoulders. I actually went on a couple dates in high school, but I never let it turn into a relationship because I felt so uncomfortable being called somebody's girlfriend. I felt like it would make me it would like somehow domesticate me and make me less of a career woman. Then when I finally got to college, I really entered a boy crazy stage of my life. Honestly, a lot of it was because for the first time I felt like I didn't have a whole lot of sense of self or like a promising future, honestly. I felt so insecure about my skills, my intelligence, my future, that I really just wanted a boy to like cling on to and to kind of give me a, yeah, a sense of self because I just felt like a nobody floating around college. Our parents' generation was kind of the generation that met their significant others in college or in their early 20s. So in my head, college was the time that I like met my husband and I was like, game time, ladies, I have, two and a half years in college to find a man, lock him down. And this is like my only window of opportunity. So I was really gung ho about relationships. Granted, I had a lot of fun Tinder dates. I had a couple relationships, which overall I think were a net positive, but I definitely didn't feel completely comfortable being single. And every time that I was single, I was just thinking of it as like a little gap before my next relationship. And that brings me to the summer of 2018. It's so weird to say 2018 like it was in the past. I feel like it's still fucking 2018. That was the summer before I graduated college and for a couple months I lived by myself for the first time in my life. I was working on my YouTube channel and I think for the first time since I left high school, I felt like myself. It's not like I was a fully like self-actualized person and I'm still so far from that. But I think that was the first time that 
the mindset that I have right now kind of clicked. The best way I can describe my mindset shift was I used to think my life was a rom-com where my end goal was to get married to some dreamy man and then my movie ended. <laughs> but now I think of my life as like a sitcom with 10 seasons and I'm just at the beginning of season two. I have so much time in my life before I figure out who the fuck I am. I have so much growing to do. I'm gonna have all of these different jobs, live in all of these different cities and I don't know, I'm just kind of like along for the ride with myself. And I feel like that's a good place to be. So anyways, I feel like it's easier said than done to shift your mindset, but I thought it would be helpful in this video to dissect some of the misconceptions that I had in my previous mindset where I felt guilty for being single and I felt like I needed a guy in my life. So the first influence, which I kind of mentioned before, is rom-coms and coming of age films. Now. I still to this day love me a good cheesy rom-com and I know that they are sometimes horribly written and they have really problematic ideals, but I will enjoy it anyways. But I don't think I realized until recently how much effect the rom-coms that I watched when I was younger had on my view of myself and relationships. Recently, thank the Lord, there have been more female directors, Greta Gerwig. Here's just a quick round of applause for Greta Gerwig being Greta Gerwig and also Cersei Ronan. Oh. Praise the Lord, what a power couple. But when I was growing up, the only context where I saw a woman be a protagonist was in a rom-com. It was in a romantic setting. Anywhere else, she was the sidekick, she was love interest, so again, a romantic setting, which probably more than I'd like to admit, definitely influenced me to feel like the way that I had control over my life or like kind of my life narrative was to hunt down a man or to be the love interest. And that's like not what being a woman or being like a human being is about. You know, another thing was coming of age films, which is one of the few genres that actually features like young people. And the traditional coming of age narrative is him getting the girl or having sex. And especially in college, I really internalized that message to mean that growing up and becoming an adult meant getting a boyfriend, which is not that's not how I experienced coming of age at all, really. I think that my coming of age was spending time with myself, which you never see in movies. And if anything, going back home to Maryland and spending time with my friends and feeling like really loved in a friendship context. Really my first relationship like was not a, a coming of age for me at all, but that's not a story that we really see told in pop culture. Second of all, something that definitely contributed to my quote unquote boy crazy mentality was admittedly that I derived a lot of validation from male attention. That's kind of hard for me to admit because I really, really wanna be like a really great feminist with no internalized misogyny my entire life. But oh honey, do any of us? I don't know. <laughs> Growing up in my hometown, girls were just not cool. Honestly, like, our society has a real problem with just hating teenage girls in general. There was definitely an overriding feeling in my high school that girls just like weren't cool, they weren't funny, and if you wanted to have cool friends, you should hang out with the guys. Wow, hashtag I'm not like other girls. No, I genuinely like was kind of one of those girls. Like, like I had girlfriends in high school, but at the end of the day and uh, this like cringy social climbing slash social positioning way. I never would go out of my way to hang out with them so that I could feel cool like I would with guys. Ugh, gross, gross. <laughs> but I think a lot of people experience this too. Like our society sets up women to compete with other women for male attention. We are told this false narrative that male attention is a limited commodity and that we have to hunt it down because in order to feel valuable and in order to even like exist as a visible part of society, you have to be seen by men. This is like a huge problem in Hollywood and in the modeling industry as well, where women over 30 kind of just like disappear. It's kind of just this unsaid cultural thing where it's like, oh, you're like over 40, like, you go and hide in the shadows now. Nobody wants to see your wrinkles. God forbid you offend anybody with your human skin. Side note, but if you guys saw Ocean's 8, one of the most infuriating things about that movie to me was the fact that they like CGI blurred out Sandra Bullock and Kate Blanchett's wrinkles. I mean, I wouldn't even say wrinkles. Like they have aged so gracefully, but even like the phrase aging gracefully kind of implies that if you age in like a normal fucking way where you have wrinkles and lines on your face, that that's even a bad thing or that's ungraceful. 
<laughs> there's no escaping it. I have seen kind of the sentiment on like Reddit before too that like, oh, you better take advantage of all the attention you get when you're a young 20 something because like you're not hot shit for your entire life. And then it puts like all this pressure on such a narrow part of your life in order to like, yeah, grasp all this male attention and feel like you exist before you like disappear into the shadows, which is just like a horrible way to have to think about life. Another aspect of this male attention thing for me was definitely the fact that I glowed up pretty late in my life. I was just not that cute when I was younger. I felt so invisible and I had all these crushes on guys that would just never ever like me back. So when I got to college and I first was like, oh, I guess I can like kind of pull guys now. I got such satisfaction and like satisfaction is a gross word to use for that, but I felt so validated even going on Tinder and like matching with an attractive guy. It was like a type of high because I had never experienced that before. I was like, holy shit. Like if this guy saw me in high school, like he literally would not look twice at me. And now I'm going on a date with this guy and he's attractive and he's paying attention to me. Like, ooh, what a feeling. <laughs> I do think everybody feels validated in a certain way when attractive people pay attention to them, which is just like, biology, baby. But at this point in my life, okay, honestly, I think the real fix to this problem is you date a hot guy who has a really shitty personality. <laughs> and then you realize that hot guys are not actually all that and kind of the shininess of attractive people wears off. <laughs> I think as everybody grows older, they become more confident in themselves. They've dated more people. So a little bit of that, I don't want to say desperation, but kind of internal clamoring to be like validated by attractive people wears off a little bit. Another fear of mine with being single definitely went hand in hand with my fear of aging. I kind of talked about this before with the male attention thing, but for some reason it really settled in when I was in college that this was like my chance to meet a life partner. This was literally when I was like 18. I was like, I must find a man that I can lock down before my eggs dry out because I'm already getting old, baby. Kind of counterintuitively, as I've grown up, I actually feel like I have more time in my life. When I was 18, I felt like my youth would be so short. But now that I'm 21, I'm like, holy shit, I have nine more years before I'm 30. Even at 30, I'll still be really young. So I have so much time to figure out myself and to like one day down the line, if I wanna get married, find somebody to do that with. Um, wow, that was the least romantic explanation of love I've ever heard. Do the marriage with me, please. <laughs> Even with friends that I talk to nowadays, the question always comes up, when do you wanna get married? Because it's such a conundrum in this modern day and age where you want to have a successful career, you wanna be your own person, but everybody's magic number is still 30. They're like, I wanna be married by 30. I wanna have kids by 35. And to me, it does feel like a really fucking unfair biological trap because men have so much time and they're also told that they're attractive for so much longer. Like a guy who's 45, people are still like zaddy. Women who are 45 and single, they're not like, zombie. Mommy, what? Yeah, let's take that back. Men feel like they have so much longer to get married. And I think that definitely does give them an advantage in the dating game because they don't feel the same pressure that a lot of young women do to lock somebody down. They feel like they have time, they feel like they have options and therefore they can shop around more. And women are left with this scarcity mindset of like, I better pick up all the good men before they're gone, before they're taken, there aren't gonna be any left. What I'm slowly realizing as I get older is that like <laughs> literally every single year I feel like a different person. I look back on myself from a year ago and I'm like, who the fuck was that? Why was she so dumb? Why was she so insecure? And that's great because that means that I'm growing as a human being. I have just become a lot more excited about growing older. I hate that women are told that they almost lose value as they grow older. It's like, what the fuck? You gain experience, you gain knowledge. I'm gonna be smarter, funnier, better at sex, finally figure out how to style my bangs when I'm 30. Like I'm just gonna objectively be a better person. And why wouldn't somebody wanna date that person too? I was talking to my friend Damon about this actually. He's 27, single, traveling the world, living in Paris, having threesomes with French dudes. Like <laughs> Damon is living the life. And I think I used to like in this very conservative mindset, almost look down on him and be like, oh, like I can't believe he's so irresponsible. What is he doing at 27, not trying to settle down? Honestly, that was a really judgy mentality. So I'm sorry, Damon. But obviously as I've gotten to know him better, I've come to respect the shit out of him. I think it's so cool that he's doing exactly what he wants to do. Something he told me that I actually really liked is that even if you don't get married, you don't die alone. This is like something people joke about all the time. Like, oh, I'm forever alone. I'm gonna die alone. 
And like, no, if you grow up and you're single, that doesn't mean that you're alone. You have your friends, you have your family. Honestly, I wanna be one of those people at like a retirement home with my girl squad, still like gossiping about the latest feminist theory. And that would be a great way to grow old. So people like Damon have definitely helped me feel less pressure to, you know, lock it down and get married because I think no matter how my life turns out, I'm gonna have a fucking blast. Yeah. That's a good feeling. Now, another more internal pressure that I felt to be in a relationship was the desire for vicarious success. My freshman year in college was definitely my most boy crazy year, the year that I felt the most dependent on relationships. And that also happened to be the year that I felt the least sure of my career and myself and whether I would ever achieve any success. Basically in high school, I was blessed with the confidence that only a 17 year old right after she takes her SATs has. And that I like literally thought I could conquer the world. I was like, I'm the smartest person in all of suburban Maryland. I am the best filmmaker. Everybody thinks I'm gonna win an Oscar and therefore I shall. But once I got to film school, I was like, oh no. I know nothing about this industry. I have no idea whether I will ever be successful not to mention even employed. Literally some of my professors in college said the best way to be in the film industry was to just marry rich so that you have the time and money to make what you want. Yeah, things that I learned in college. Can't believe that I paid like $150,000 for that piece of information, thank you. If I could have kept my tuition money, I could be my own fucking sugar daddy. This sounds so gold diggery, but like, I, I think deep down I just wanted like security and that wasn't like, ooh, let me find a rich sugar daddy. I think I just wanted to, I think I was just scared that my future wouldn't work out. And I was scared that I literally wouldn't have anywhere to go after graduation. And it made me feel like I could maybe have more of a purpose if I just attached my purpose to somebody else. I guess just like looking back, I'm like, if I had continued dating my first boyfriend for like all of college and really invested in the relationship and gave it so much time, would I have gone out of my way to start a YouTube channel? Would I have put all of my heart and soul into that? Would I be where I am today? I want to say that it's possible, but I think that at that stage of my life where I was at my lowest career confidence, I don't think I would have pushed myself to go out there and make something for myself if I was already at such a young age putting myself in this like housewife mentality. I know some women really do want to be like a housewife or a mother, and I think those are really important jobs as well. But I would say if you're unsure of your life right now, don't settle into like the mindset of being the sidekick or the love interest. Like you are still the protagonist of your own life. Even if you're having a rocky time right now, give yourself the time and the passion to, you know, write your own story. That sounds so cheesy, but like, you know what I mean. The last kind of flawed influence I had that made me feel so bad for being single was slut shaming. And our fucked up relationship with women's sexuality. Something that still frustrates me to this day is the fact that women are considered sluttier if they have sex with multiple men than if they're having the same amount of sex with one man in a relationship. And I think that when I was younger, especially, I really identified as like a good girl. Like I was a rule follower. I did all the things that people wanted me to do that made me socially acceptable and made me classy. And so I never really got to have the fun of being single or take full advantage of it because I didn't feel like I could have sex with guys. I felt like I couldn't sleep around. And if I wanted to have sex regularly, I had to be in a relationship. And you know how bad decisions are when you make them when you're horny. <laughs> Some of my friends even now will talk about their number as in the number of guys that they've had sex with and keeping that number low. I think a lot of women feel pressure to not sleep with that many guys in their lifetime. For a long time I did and I felt like every new guy that I had sex with, I was ticking one box off of my fucking like bingo board. I only had so many chances in my life so he had to be worth it. And now like I don't fucking count. Like who is counting? Are you serious? If anybody needs to ask you how many guys you've slept with in order to date you or in order to be your friend, literally fuck them. <laughs> don't literally fuck them actually because they sound like kind of an asshole. <laughs> Cut them out of your life, bitch. Like we don't need that energy. I think it's unfair the way that we talk about casual sex because it genuinely it makes it more fun for guys to be single because they can like fuck around and they are congratulated, they're more masculine, they're a sexy bachelor. And a lot of women don't get to have that same amount of fun. So I'd encourage you guys, I know it's easier said than done, but there is no need to be counting. If you wanna do something, do it and take full advantage of the time in your life that you have when you're single. One of the best advice that I got from somebody who was married was that she wishes that she had sex with more people before she got married because like one day, 
that guy might come around and that's the last guy you'll ever have sex with. So fucking carpe diem, baby. Like. <laughs> Before I go, instead of just like complaining about the patriarchy for this entire video, I did want to give you guys some kind of actionable tips that have definitely helped me enjoy being single. Number one, get comfortable going out alone. One of my friends from film school literally will take herself to a movie every week. She'll buy herself soup at a restaurant and just sit alone and eat the soup and then go to the movie theater and have herself a fucking blast. And I really admire that. The first time that I went out alone to a restaurant, I was so self-conscious and I was so terrified. Everybody's like, who's that lame girl eating by herself? But at the end of the day, nobody cared. I got to enjoy a really good pizza and then I went on my merry way. I promise you anything that you can do with a significant other, you can plan and do for yourself. You just have to take that extra time to put in the effort and um, go and make like me time for yourself. Ew, I hate the phrase me time. It's so like white Pinterest girl, but like, honestly, they're kind of onto something. It's nice to have me time sometimes. Number two, get comfortable putting yourself out there and ultimately getting rejected kind of a lot. I think a lot of people can be scared of being single because it does involve so much more like putting yourself out there. You're not sure that you have somebody to come home to. You're not sure somebody will be there for you at a party, but it is also something that is really exciting if you learn how to take rejection. Honestly, the way that I learned is just putting myself out there like so many fucking times. It feels so painful at first, but then when you're on your like 50th time where you like are trying to chat with somebody on a dating app and they hit you back with a, uh, do you have coronavirus? True story. You're just like, fuck you. And also, <laughs> Next one. Number three is a little depressing, but getting broken up with has actually helped change my perspective on being single so much. I've been through three relationships at this point and I've gotten a lot more comfortable being single because I don't view relationships as like life or death anymore. And I also know the hardships that come with relationships. A lot of the times when you're younger, you just think that relationships are like Tumblr photos. It's a montage of beautiful people kissing in the sunset. And it doesn't always feel like that. Like relationships are hard fucking work too. So it's definitely made me realize there are pluses and minuses of relationships and of being single. And it's made me romanticize relationships a lot less and make me realize that being single isn't so bad in comparison. And lastly, and most importantly, realize that this is such an important time in your life for personal growth and development and just like figuring out who the fuck you are. Being single and realizing that I only have myself to rely on, I have to spend this much time with myself and realizing that I have the power over my life to move where I want, to change careers, to change up my style, to be friends with new people. It really pushes me to develop as a human being and really think about what I want in life and who I wanna be. That is like some of the most exciting shit. It can be painful sometimes, but God damn it, it is a good feeling. So anyways, I am running super late. So thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to all my single ladies this Valentine's Day. I hope that you have a fantastic time with yourself or your friends or whoever you're fucking at the moment. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.